nanohub.org. You can follow along with this presentation using printed slides from the NanoHub. Visit www.nanohub.org and download the PDF file containing the slides for this presentation. Print them out and turn each page when you hear the following sound. Enjoy the show. So in this presentation, I would like to overview um, some of the impact that can be had with edu uh, on education with nanohub.org. Um, so here's an, one example where uh, Jeff Grossman at Berkeley has developed a, a whole course on computational nanoscience that he had taught at Berkeley, and it's fundamentally based on nanohub simulations. And in there, he has very powerful research codes like LAMPS, which is a molecular dynamic and electronic structure code, but he delivers that to students without having to overwhelm them with all the LAMPS technology and the installation and all the input tech, but you can enter structural information uh, um, into a tool set. And uh, people uh, do this now, we actually had uh, uh, somewhat usage in Berkeley, and we added Berkeley uh, to the NCN a few years back. Here's some screenshots of a, uh, a, a tool that is in the Berkeley tool set, and there is associated documentation with these and homework exercises. And actually, uh, we had some 4,500 4, uh, runs in the last year with this tool set. And to give you an idea, it's really, we had Berkeley users all over the time, but really having this course really increased it by an order of magnitude to have usage on, on, nano, uh, on NanoHub from the Berkeley toolset on, and at Berkeley. Um, here's another um, complete course set. We call it uh, Introduction to Semiconductor Devices with Abacus, which is an assembly of basic applications for coordinated understanding of semiconductors. So in most engine, electrical engineering schools, there's a semiconductor course, and that semiconductor course teaches about what is a silicon crystal structure, what are crystal structures, what is band structure, what is a PN junction, what is a MOSFET. We have now assembled a set of tools into this abacus that allows people to run simulations and visualizations for this type of class, and in this uh, uh, visualization and tool, there's also homework assignments and tutorials that go along with the wiki page. So a faculty member or a student can just go to that web page and actually use it in their existing class. It's not like creating a new class, which takes a lot of effort, but they can augment their existing class. And students can actually rotate these crystals around and get a feeling for the geometry, which is better than possibly bringing these crystal structures into the classroom and not handing them around because you're afraid they're going to break. And so another uh, tool set we call ACME, Advancing Quantum Mechanics for Engineers, allows us to deploy in a single package tools about resonant tunneling, artificial atoms, um, uh, looking at uh, correlation effects in uh, in the state spectrum and MOSFETs, quantized MOSFETs, so that's in ACME. Again, this is a tool set geared towards a course that's in uh, Introduction to Quantum Mechanics for Engineers, but it's then, again, geared towards devices rather than uh, nuclear physics. So that's one way of teaching quantum mechanics, but geared towards semiconductor devices. Uh, we have now a whole set of these, so I mentioned Abacus, I mentioned the Computational Nanoscience Toolkit, I mentioned ACME. We have a sort of a, an overview of nanotechnology survey uh, course uh, called ANSI and uh, an assembly for computational electronics, ACUTE. And these tool sets in the last, have been sort of introduced uh, around a year ago, year and a half ago, and they've been used by over 1,200 people now uh, around the world. So these are powerful assemblies of, of, of features. So here's an example of a person using uh, NanoHub for teaching. It's a faculty member at Stanford. Uh, he had very nice things to say about that it's been proven extremely valuable for education and research. And he says something nice about our staff members, uh, that they were helpful. 
But he really turned into a new contributor. He started to upload the homeworks that he used for the NanoHub into the, uh, into the NanoHub. So others can utilize that as well. So he became a contributor to NanoHub. And here's a sort of interesting story. So this person, Deji Akinwande, uh, was in his class in 2005. And so that's quite a while ago. Uh, two years, and why am I talking about it? Because two years later, he uh, um, published a paper in IEEE Transactional Electron Devices. And he is actually not a device person as such, he's a circuit person. So uh, what he uh, uh, used in his circuit work is a tool that he learned about in his class two years earlier. So this kind of shows nicely the connection between classroom work and being introduced into a concept and that migrating into research and still being used for research. So this distinction between education and research is not all that clean cut anymore. It's not that you can say, well, this is only an educational tool, it can't be used for research, or this is just a research tool, it can't be used for education. Um, there have been some uh, uh, 294 courses that have been taught at over two, uh, 92 institutions that we know about over the years. And roughly per semester, we have some 40 courses all over the world that utilize NanoHub for teaching. So clearly, it's being used for, for educational purposes. <laughs>